we doing today? Great. You know, that was kind of weak. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. That's a lot better. All right, my name is Brian Moore. Um, I am a minister at Lakeshore Christian Church. I've been asked today to speak to you about Dare to be Different. Now, for me, Dare to be Different was a topic that was chosen for me, but it's also me. Dare to be Different is very different for me because I am different. It gets a little weird after a while. But we got to start off by praying. Lord, I just give, ask that you give me clarity of speech, precision of thought. Let the words I speak not be mine, but be yours. Let me be used for the glory of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. All right, dare to be different. Dare, dare to be different. Like I said, dare to be different is me because I am that different kind of guy. Um, I know that I was called to preach when I was probably about the age of 12-ish or so, but the preachers that I knew were preachers. You guys know preachers, right? <laughs> yeah, we grew up in a black tradition in which our preachers are very demonstrative, are very, you know. <laughs> God said. All right, man. <laughs> in the beginning, there was. Now, that was not me. That's never been me. I'm more of the analytical, articulate, plain spoken. You know, I've been accused of being the Joel Osteen of pastors kind of guy. I'm a practical application person. I need it to be plain and simple. I love the Bible. I get the Bible. But I know many people like me when I was growing up reading King James. I, I didn't get King James. I didn't understand it. I struggled with it. So I learned church ease. You guys know church ease. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. You know, the words we're supposed to say, the amens, the hallelujahs, yeah. in the right place. I learned that, but didn't understand what I was talking about. Sure. Half the time, I didn't understand what I was doing. I was just doing it because everybody else was doing it. So dare to be different for me is this. Dare to be different means that I have to be who I am, who God called me to be, in order to be effective where I am. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture, because it's one of my favorites. Ephesians 2 and 10 says this. In the New American Bible, Standard Bible, it says, For we are his workmanship, yes. mm, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. We are his workmanship. That means God used his hand to make us just the way we are. We are not a mistake. We are not a throwaway. There's nothing wrong with us. God made us just the way he wanted to make us so that we can do works for him that he already planned out for us. Now, with that being said, I have three questions. The first one is this. Who are you? Now, if we believe God called us to be who we are, if we believe that God made us just the way he wanted us, who are we? It seems like an easy question to ask, but in, in actuality it's not, because who we are is not who other people have said we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who we are is not the box that they put us in. Who we are is not what everybody in the court system, our families, our pastors, or anybody else that's forced us into be this thing that we are not. Again, growing up in the 70s and 80s, you're told certain things, you're functioning certain ways, you see things on television, you watch television, and these things begin to permeate what you think you are. Many of the times we call them stereotypes, but they really form our minds to make us something that we are not. As a young black male, I often get on an elevator, and as we know, many times if there's an older Caucasian person on the, on the elevator, they seem to shrink back clutch their purse, turn to the side. I'm as cornball as you want to be. I'm not worried about your purse. I'm just trying to get where I'm trying to go. But the stereotypes have made it so that we as black men seem to be something that we are not. I may be of a medium height, but I'm not a basketball player. Don't ask me to hoop. I don't want to be on your side. That is not something that I do. Now, I can swim but I can't play basketball. So I ask the question, who are you? Who are you really? You see, it takes quiet. It takes thought. It 
It takes openness and honesty to really find out who you are. God said we are his workmanship, but if God made us, we still have to understand who we are. We have to throw off all those things that everybody else said that we are. We have to forget what society says about us and recognize who we actually are. We have to look deep inside and ask him, our father, who are we? It's interesting that the scripture, Jesus asked Peter, who do they say I am? So the first question in Dare to Be Different is, who are you? Ephesians 2.10, again, is one of my favorite scriptures. I read it first in the New American Standard. If I read it in the New International Version, it says this. It said, for we are God's handiwork. Hmm. So not only are we his work, but another version said we are his handiwork. God formed us with his hand for a purpose. God made us just the way he wanted to make us. He molded us. He used his hand upon us to make us who we are. So dare to be different, I'm asking another question. Where are you? You see, first, in order to be different, we have to know who we are. Then after we think we know who we are, we have to find out where we are. What situation are we in that we shouldn't be in? What situation are we in that we caused ourselves to be in? What situation are we in right now that other people have forced us into? Are we married to the wrong person? Are we at the wrong job? Did we overfinance with a house and with a car to maintain a standard of living that we should not have? Not that we don't deserve, but we may not be ready for it yet. Right, right. Where are we? You see, you have to find out who you are and then where you are. So maybe we have to step back from where we are, where we've placed ourselves, not where God has put us. You see, he's given us free will. That's scary. That's the responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> free will allows us to do some things that we want. Mm -hmm. Lord knows I like chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Butter pecan ice cream. And working out is not a fun thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't need an amen for the wife back there. <laughs> But I realize that I've placed myself in a situation where I'm just a little bit more overweight than I should be. My cholesterol numbers are a little bit higher than what they should be because I have free will, because I do the things that I shouldn't do. Because I had two of those chocolate chip cookies last night at 9.30 before I went to bed. But that's a situation that I've... <laughs> but that's a situation that I've placed myself in. So the who I am and the where I am partially is me. I find myself now having to work out more, to change my diet, to eat less, to do things differently. You see, these are the things that God did not create upon me, but I allowed myself to get in these situations. Situations that I now have to dig myself out of, feel the pain to move from where I am to where I'm going. Mm. <laughs> There's a time factor involved also in, in these two things because I had to figure out who I was, who I, who I am in Christ. I had to figure out where I was, what situations have I placed myself in that I should not be in, that I need to move from. And then after I know those two things, I have to find out the last and what may be the most important thing. If I go back to Ephesians 2 and 10, I'll read it from the New Living. And this is one of my favorites. And it said, for we are God's masterpiece. Mm. So we're his workmanship. We're his handiwork. But we're also his masterpiece. <coughs> You see, for me, masterpiece, masterpiece is a complete work, ready for show, 
ready, ready to be placed on a pedestal, ready for, for life, ready to be adored. That's what God said about me. That's who I am in God. But the situations and, and things that I've done in my life have, have put me in a situation where I'm not quite ready for those accolades. I'm not quite ready to be shown to everyone yet. See, I know I'm still a work in progress. I understand that. But dare to be different, I have to shed off those old things that I thought I was. Those things that I am not have to be gone. I have to know who I am. Those things that tell me to do certain things and act a certain way, it's not me. I have to get to a base to know who I am, where I am, and where I'm going in order to say that I'm different. Now, we here on the room are all African Americans. We share similar backgrounds in many ways. We have a have a commonality. We are all similar, but in no way are we the same. Right. You know, when I worked in, in food service and fast food, we all got a uniform. Now, as a young kid, not, you know, having a father and growing up sort of in the rough areas, we sort of formed our little groups. Nowadays, they call them gangs. We weren't a gang because there was only like four of us. And a little scrawny guys, but <laughs> we had our t-shirts with our name on it. We were creating this identity. When I started working in fast food, you got a uniform, you know, a hat or a visor, a shirt with a name on it. But somebody else was creating this identity for us. The job was creating this identity. My group of friends was creating an identity. Those identities are not what God has called me to be. Those identities are those things that I feel because I was missing what God wanted me to be. Because I didn't listen. Because I ran. And nowadays, because our children are so preoccupied by music and videos, you know, it's interesting because you know we have nieces and nephews and and they say they can't sleep without the TV being on. Think about it. They can't go to sleep without this noise from outside in their mind playing all night long to their subconscious. Who are they? Do we tell them who they are? Do we point them to God and tell them who they are? We have a generation of children who are looking to us as Christian leaders to help form them, to help tell them, to give them the direction that they can find out who they are. And we're fighting with a constant music, television, news, some good, much bad. Who are they? And where are they going? You see, dare to be different means that we have to find out exactly who we are, where we're going, and who God has called us to be. If we don't know that, different is just being a clown. A buffoon. Different for no reason. There'd be no basis whatsoever in our difference. We're just out there. Just doing whatever crazy hair, crazy outfits, just because. But see, God has a purpose for us. God knows who we are, who he made us to be, and what he wants us to be. So we have to find that out. We have to dig deep and find out what that is so that we can stand for who we are. See, I, I start off by making a sort of a joke about me being the Joel Osteen, but but I know in the congregation that I serve, which is an older, Caucasian, very traditional congregation, they can't do a hoop. That's not in their nature. Right. In one of our sister churches, I went to preach, and I was told that I had eight minutes. Eight minutes for a sermon. Now, the person who went there was, a, was, a, it was an African-American church. It was traditionally... Caucasian, she was African American. She said she finally got them up 
to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. 12, now, come on, y'all know. 12 minutes, we just get started. We winding up. We about to go in. We going in. something different. I know who I am. That's all right. That's right. I am called to serve not only the church that I am, but in the government. I do lots in our city. And I know when I, when, if I were to show up as Reverend Brian Moore, the walls shut down. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. They expect reverends to be a certain way, That's to right. say certain things, to do certain things. Their ears are already closed as soon as you make that introduction as reverend. Right. But when I go in as just Brian Moore, right. the minister that I am, the man of God that I am, mm -hmm. I'm able to have a conversation, to make friends, and eventually to affect change in our city. Because I don't put up a wall of reverend, pastor, and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But I know who I am. I know what I'm called. I've, I've received the prophecies. I've owned them. I've stepped up to them. As weird as they sound, I, I got to tell you this story. It's, it's kind of interesting. I got a prophecy one time from a gentleman from um, uh, Nigeria. And he said he saw these gates around the city. He said it wasn't a door. He said it was a gate. He said it was a big gate. So immediately, my wife and I, you know, we're talking about it, and the idea of Nehemiah came up. So that Nehemiah scripture has always stayed with me about the idea of building walls. I held on to that even when I did not understand it. I think it took about two years to start fully acting on the idea of these gates. But then I was in a position to be on a committee that looked at the city of Euclid and the street in Euclid in which I could possibly create a gate, a physical gate in that city. You know, sort of a gateway that shows as you're driving through a city where the city began. I now have an opportunity to form this gate. That was interesting. But then as I continued in my political career and in my ministerial career, there are other opportunities that have come up in which the gates of the city that he said were easy are easy. There's an opportunity now for me possibly, well, definitely, to be a council person without even running. The person that's in that position physically can't do it anymore. She said, there's nobody else I could think of that I'd want to take that other than you. Wow. So this dare to be different means I had to know who I was yeah. because right. Right. if everybody else had pushed me to be a pastor of a large church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the city is there. The city needs people that are faith-based, that are yeah. Christian-minded, yeah. Yeah. Christian men that can stand up yeah. and affect change from yes. a real yes. change sense, from a right. law sense. That's right. Yes, praying is wonderful. Yes, the things that we do as pastors, yes, it's wonderful. But we know the seat of government still holds much sway yes. over everything that happens mm -hmm. and over our children. Yes. You know, we're, we're dealing with situations now where we have to go out and say black lives matter. I mean, come on, all lives matter. Right. But we have to teach our kids how to act when stopped by police. Right. I mean, you talk about legal lynching. Right. This is crazy. It's like it's open season on the black man right now, or black woman for that matter. We just had one in, I think, in New York, gunned down in her own house. Dare to be different means that we have to know who God has called us to be so that we can be what he wants us to be. It sounds simple, but it's not that simple because we have to stand up and be that. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I, I, I love my parents or my mother. I, I love those pastors that came before me, but they saw something in me and they thought I was this. They were trying to put a round hole, a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. I'm as square as taken up. <laughs> I know I'm boring. My wife will tell you. When I met her, I had my sweater tucked in. And, uh, yeah, I'll be 
was that guy. I was not on the verge of purple, but I was I was close to it. But I also know that those things that I did back in the day, for the most part, were for my good. I had choices, good and bad, some choices I made that went horribly wrong, other choices that I stood on that made me the man that I am today. And I also know that the man I am today is still evolving to be something more. Dare to be different means that we have to know who we are and know where we're going. The people around you sometimes have to fall off. Yep. The people around you sometimes have to fall off. I grew up in church and, and went away and, you know, I sort of see some people I hadn't seen in a while. And every once in a while, I get reminded that I'm Betty's boy. I am 50 years old. I am a grown man <laughs> with a real job and a real family. Do I have to be Betty's boy? Right. Sometimes there are people around us who want to remind us of who we were or who they wanted us to be. Sometimes those people have to go. That's a hard thing because they are our friends. They were our friends. But more importantly, we have to stand on what God wants us to be and where God wants us to go. So do you know who you are? Do you know where you are? And do you know where you're going? Dare to be different? means that we need to answer all three of those questions as openly and honestly as we can and start to affect change in our own lives so that we can be different, not just for different sake, but be different for God, to be used by him in the place that he wants us to be used. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you. I would just like to say I think you're cooler than Urkel. I'm cooler than Urkel. For sure, for sure. You know what? You got the <laughs> Stefan going on. Baseline. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Thank you, guys.